Do you believe that if you had been based here in India, or at least if you had spent more time here in India, maybe things wouldn't, come, wouldn't have come to this pass? Because uh, a lot of the problems seem to have arisen because of a communication breakdown, because of a communication deficit, which then led to a trust deficit. In hindsight, do you believe that the decision to stay away from India and be based in Palo Alto uh, didn't work in anyone's interest? Shireen, I don't want to talk about things looking backwards anymore. The, uh, uh, it was an incredibly challenging um, job. And uh, uh, I mean, the clients are all outside India. And uh, we, we forget that the business of the company is with the clients. And meeting them, working with them, working with the teams that are there is how you understand what's going on. The innovation is happening here in Silicon Valley. And so... So it was a complex balance of spending time, mostly in airplanes, as you know. And so, you know, I, uh, I, I, whatever decisions we took at the time were all decisions in the right interests, and uh, um, and I would not uh, second guess them. Have you heard from employees, clients, investors uh, in the last 24 to 48 hours, Vishal? It has been non-stop, Shireen. It has been uh, continuous. I have had uh, literally thousands of, uh, of emails and messages and, and so forth from, from employees. It has been overwhelming from customers, from investors, from partners, from everywhere. And it has just been, I am so far behind on responding to those and, and it has just been absolutely overwhelming. And I am it is very moving. It's like, I mean, there is a constant, uh, 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 it, it's, it's the, the sentiments that I have heard from employees and from, uh, from clients and investors and so forth are, you know, you, you, feel, you feel really good that, uh, you know, you had so much, so much impact. Uh, but I haven't had time to absorb all this. I, in fact, I responded to maybe 10% of the, of the big emails and, and messages. Uh, you know, you said you don't want to dwell on the past, and I understand that. But since we're talking about moving forward, uh, and Nandan, uh, you know, during the course of the many uh, uh, investor calls and press conferences that he's done today, uh, has very categorically stated that he intends to build consensus. Uh, and this is really, in a sense, the start of a, a process of repair, so to speak, given what we've seen play out over the last few weeks, uh, the last few months, in fact. If I were to ask you about the process of reconciliation, re-establishing, Establishing a connection that you enjoyed with Mr. Murthy, is that something that you would hope for? I mean, you, um, why not? You never say never to these things. Uh, but um, I mean, I I want to uh, I, I want to take some time and uh, think through what I want to do next, and then you have to give everything you've got to that whatever that new thing is that you're going to do. And um, so you don't want to make uh, you know commitments uh, like this about the future, but uh, uh, why not? Would you, would you reach out to Mr. Murthy? Shireen, come on. The, uh, <laughs> look, the, uh, what I'm thinking about is, first of all, what I'm thinking about is I'm late for taking my kids to school, and second thing I'm thinking about is uh, uh, the, the world around us is, uh, is going through a very profound change, and uh, I, want to, uh, I want to do something about it in a, in a big way. Let me end then by asking you, you know, you put a strategy in place for Infosys. Uh, you believe firmly that it is an iconic company, uh, that it has a, a, a resilience, and it will continue to, uh, to grow further from where you've left it. Um, how confident do you feel about uh, the future of Infosys, given what you were able to contribute by way of its strategy? You know, the, uh, uh, it all it comes down to the power and the imagination of the Infosians. And it is my big pride of the last three years is to, in whatever um, little way that I could, of uh, helping to ignite that, that creative confidence. And uh, it is an amazing institution. It is an extraordinary institution. And... But it is the people. It is made of and made by the people. And uh, the people will carry it forward. And now you have one of the most iconic 
uh, leaders and the you know most iconic Infosys on Nandan running it, and it is uh, um, so. Um, I am not only confident; I feel a tremendous sense of pride in that. You know, you give three, three and a quarter years of your life um, completely and wholeheartedly to a mission like that, and uh, uh, I hope that when we look back on this uh, on this time, that people will see that the change away from a this global delivery model based on cost and and uh, labor arbitrage towards a model where the imagination, the entrepreneurial spirit, the ability to innovate out of every infosion um, uh, that is the future, that this happened in uh, uh, in my time. And uh, it was planted and it started to grow in my time. And then it became a mighty tree after that. So, you know, I, uh, I'm very proud of the three years and I'm very proud of the company. And, uh, uh, and I, you know, I'm very hopeful and um, with all my being, I wish it the very best and I wish Nandan the very best. And, but, you know, broadly also Shazika, the, it's, the, it's, the... Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that the, this, uh, this idea of, uh, uh, of transforming our, our, our humanity, of transforming ourselves into, into entrepreneurs, into innovators, into uh, people who can create the future. Alan Kay always says that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And uh, so with the power of AI, with the power of education to transform ourselves and uh, to be entrepreneurs, to exercise our imagination into shaping the future, this is an idea that, of course, it applies to Infosys, but it is far goes far beyond that. It applies to the entire IT services industry. It, indeed, it applies to, to our humanity. And uh, the world of the future has to be like this. It has to be a world where AI enables us to be uh, to be more creative, more imaginative. It, you know, an artificial intelligence uh, may make us all that much more human and that much more powerful. And this is what I am going to work on. Well, Vishal Sikha, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. We wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And uh, uh, good luck for your new innings uh, uh, with whatever it is that you decide to do. We hope that uh, it will be a success. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. Thank you so much, Irene.